everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm finally doing my August wrap-up video. I know it's mid-September. I'm so sorry. I was just way too busy and I couldn't get around to filming it, but I did read a lot of books and I would love to share my opinions on them. So let's get on with it. <laughs> In the month of August, I was participating in ARC August, which is like a read-along slash read-a-thon where um, bloggers just try to read as many ARCs as they can. So I did have a specific TBR for that, but I also read some other books that I started in July and kind of they got carried over to August. So I will just go in whatever order I finish the books and just mention whether it was for that challenge or just a completely different thing. And the first book that I finished in August was Sleeping Giants, book number one in Themis Files trilogy by Sylvain Novell. And that is a sci-fi adult series. I absolutely adored that book. I picked it up because I saw one of my, uh, one of the bloggers that I follow on booktube, one of the booktubers mentioned this book, specifically audiobook and then I decided to pick it up. So this is an adult sci-fi sci in which we have um, the whole story is told from um, in the format of dialogues or rather transcripted interviews. So it is in some ways a bit similar to Illuminate by Jay Kristoff and Annie Kaufman, but like I was saying for years and years, Illuminate was not very original. We've had other books that were written similarly. For example, Sleeping Giants, I think it came after Illuminate, but nevertheless, it has pretty much a similar format in which we have just transcripted interviews. However, this is the only format that we have in this book. And when you pick up the physical book, you just see the dialogues, you didn't see anything else. However, just listening to it in audio made me completely engrossed in the book because it is a multiple cast audiobook, which means that we have multiple actors voicing different characters. That brings a lot to the story, as always. Uh, plus, we have a lot of other sounds that are being, you know, either described or um, are added to the audiobook, which is also very helpful. The plot of the book is uh, fairly simple, I would say. So we have a mysterious object which has been unearthed um, unearthed somewhere on the planet in US. This is um, what seems to be a part of a huge, huge uh, statue, but then very quickly the uh, researchers who find it, and that is just part of the hand, just palm, like one hand, uh, they realize that it's actually a huge part not of a statue, but of a robot. So turns out that this um, Robot was left on Earth by aliens who visited the planet ages and ages ago and they split it into different parts for people to discover and there is also a reason why they were left there and there is also a reason why they're being discovered at this point in time. So we have a main protagonist which is a researcher and a scientist and she was actually the one who came upon this first piece of that robot as a child and then miraculously got involved into this project later in her life. We also have some other um, protagonists, like um, two pilots who are being employed by this research team to find other pieces of this robot, and we have also a mysterious person who is uh, kind of represents a shadow government or something like this. So I absolutely adored that book. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I think it is a perfect book to be narrated as an audiobook. I cannot really see myself reading it in physical form. Format. That's why I gave it four stars. Narration is excellent, so performance is definitely five stars. There were some moments in the plot that made me kind of... Um, it's not, it's not, it was not really much about the plot itself, but just I did not like some of the characters, which I guess is a good thing, but as always, I just wanted the plot to progress more quickly. And the beginning was kind of slow, and uh, I think another reviewer also mentioned that. 
Because the book started slightly slow, I had to lower the rating, but overall, once I got into it, I really enjoyed it. And by the time I finished it and I got the first audiobook on Overdrive, I felt such a huge urge to continue with the series that I couldn't wait and I just went on Audible and purchased the second book in the series. The second book in this trilogy is Waken Gods, and I also listened to it in full um, in August, I basically flew through that audiobook. I loved it so much and it ended at such an epic moment. I couldn't really believe what was happening. Um, and the fact that it's set in a modern world, in our everyday life world, so to say. And it's kind of easy to forget that this book is actually fiction because the narration is done in the forms of dialogues or interviews. So it gives a bit more credibility to the whole thing happening. And sometimes I had to pinch myself and go like, no, 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 no. We don't have this happening in the world because a lot of things were very realistic. Especially I like the fact that the author interwines different politics and references actual historical events that happened before and that, like I said, adds to the credibility of the book and makes it more real. That was fantastic. I also gave the second book four stars. Absolutely adored it. Highly, highly recommend to all sci-fi fans. Next book that I read and finished in August was an arc and part of Arc August, and that was The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. And this book is coming out in September, but I think at the end of the month, maybe 25th or sometime around that time. Anyway, so this is a fairly short book. I read it mostly on my way to and from New York City um, at the beginning of August when I went there to see the Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Um, by the way, loved that play. Anyway, so if you watched some of my New York vlogs, you probably already heard me talk about this book, but I just want to say that it was a huge disappointment. This was the first book by Kirsten White that I got to read, and as a matter of fact, I got this arc at BookCon. I was in line for Kirsten White's signing, and she actually signed it for me. So I know that this book, sort of like an idea for this book, and this is a retelling, um, as you can guess by the title, it is a retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And she said that she got this idea from the publisher, and I think that a lot of publishers feel that right now retellings are still hot in the market. So that's why this book was written. However, I cannot really say that um, I mean, there are aspects of this book that I really enjoyed, but some of them were just really cringe-worthy. Um, since this was the first book that I read by Kirsten White, I'm now very apprehensive of other books by her, but I might give them a try. I'm just not in a mood for them as of right now. So back to the book itself. This is obviously told from the perspective of Elizabeth Frankenstein, and in this book she is a maid who is being brought up by the Frankenstein family, and she develops a very close relationship with Victor. Um, she is basically brought into this family to take care of Victor because he repels basically all babysitters, and she almost by accident is landed this job, and she excels at it because she's not faced by whatever weirdness Victor spurs on her. He, she's very... Um, organized and also very observant and she manages to keep Victor in check. Um, and then they grew up and there is also a possibility of romance and everything that is happening there. Basically this book takes off at the time when uh, Victor leaves um, to supposedly find or do some research. I think in Switzerland it is. So I watched Frankenstein, um, the play by National Theatre, written by David Boyle, and that is the production of 2011 in which John Lee Miller and Benedict Cumberbatch alternate the roles of Frankenstein and the creature. I loved that play and I watched it so many times that I developed a special attachment to that play in particular. I was very excited to read this book, however, it let me down. Uh, first of all, I did not like Elizabeth whatsoever. I did not enjoy being in her head. She felt both whiny and very um, clingy towards Victor and 
Victor was portrayed not just like a mad and brilliant scientist, but he was very clearly showing signs of psychopathy. And that was very disturbing. I, I must give it to Kirsten White. She did it really well, the way that she portrayed it. I don't know, there is something about this book that did not appeal to me. I was basically yawning and uh, rolling my eyes throughout the first third of it. Not much was happening. I know that the author needed to set the setting for this book, but since it's a retelling, we kind of know what is happening. So, I don't know, I was not very... Uh, very excited about this book. I think only once I hit somewhere 50-60% into the book, exciting stuff started to happen. The ending of this book is very different from what you might expect and I did appreciate the ending. I also appreciated references to Mary Shelley's uh, Frankenstein, the original. I liked that as well and the ending it was kind of interesting. However, I still had some problems with it and I give this book only three stars. It's definitely not something that I would want to pick up again in the finished copy and read again. Like I said, some aspects, for example, the setting was very nice, but I did not like any of the characters. I did not like Victor's father. I did not like Victor himself. I did not like his friend. I did not like Elizabeth. I did not like anyone in this book. And this was so freaking annoying because I had to read it and I somewhat suffered through it. So yeah. Only three stars, I'm afraid. Next, while being in New York and obviously going to Barnes & Noble, I picked up this novella. This is Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is a horror adult novella and it's really, really chilling. I really enjoyed it. It is a story about a guy who witnesses um, first a child throwing a tantrum in a store and then he sees the same woman um, being hit, um, like hit in another car and getting into a car accident. And once the police is there and he starts, you know, he wants to help and he goes like, oh, you have to check on this woman because she was with a child and I saw her in the store previously. And then turns out that there is no child in the car and that that woman had no children. But then turns out that this main protagonist himself has a child and that's the same child whom he basically had just met in the store an hour ago, or even less than that. So it is a very creepy story, it is very creepy, and there is a reason why it is so red, why it looks like this, and why the, <laughs> the title is Sour Candy. It is such a creepy story, I absolutely adored it, I gave it four stars. I want to check out more books by this author. This was the only book, um, I think, which was not available on Kindle. That's why instead of going on Kindle, since it's just a novella, I purchased a physical copy and I believe this uh, novella is actually self-published, but this author is also published by a traditional publisher. But it was just so creepy. It was such a creepy read. I thought it would give me nightmares. It did not, but I highly recommend if you enjoy creepy, weird stuff happening. And yeah, definitely, definitely recommend if you like that type of horror. As always, all the links to all the books will be down below. And if you, I have already reviewed a book on my blog and published my written review, it will be linked there as well. Then, as always, it happens to me, I was kind of in the mood for something trashy. So I read a couple of um, gay romance books. And to be honest, not all of them were very good. The links will be down below as well. One I gave two stars, another one I gave actually four stars and it was very good. That was the series Smoke and Bullets by A.R. Barley. But the second book in that trilogy, um, or whatever, series, I finished, I think, this month already and it sucked. So I'm not even going to talk about it right now and I'll jump straight into another arc that I read in August. And that book was Seafire by Natalie C. Parker. I received it as an arc from Penguin Random House for which I'm internally grateful. I basically begged them for it because everyone was reading this book and enjoying it and I really want to read it as well and I got this opportunity so it doesn't say when it came out exactly but I think it was 28th of August. I already have a review on my blog so I'll provide the link down below but I'll give you a general outline of what this book is about. 
So this is book number one, and this is a debut novel by Natalie C. Parker, I believe. Um, this book is slightly difficult to describe in terms of genres. It's definitely young adult and adventure, but this world has a lot of steampunk slash dystopian elements to it, because there are a lot of references to the world that was before, and we do not know what happened to that world. However, there is a lot of technology which is left in it, but people um, that live in this current world, they have to do, uh, they have to deal not only with remaining parts of technology, but also deal with natural elements like wind, etc. When I picked this book up, I thought it's going to be fantasy, but it's not. There is nothing mystical or supernatural or fantastical about it. It's more of a steampunk or dystopian. So the main protagonist of the story is Caledonia Styx and she is the pirate, a female pirate, and she's actually the one who's commandeering the whole ship of female pirates and she kind of tra uh, continues the family tradition of fighting against um, another fleet of ships. Those other ships belong to a corrupted warlord by the name of Eric. He owns those ships and he owns the people who serve on his ships. They're called Bullets. Basically, his ships go around islands and all of those places in that world collecting money and also collecting children. So all of the Bullets on Eric's ships are addicted to a drug called Silt and Basically, they would do anything for him. They fight like devils, so it adds a bit of an edge to everything and every battle that Caledonia has with those bullets. There is also a reason why Caledonia herself personally absolutely hates bullets, and one of her mo mottos is no bullets. So a good bullet is a dead bullet. However, at one of the battles that they have with one of the Eric's ships, um, brings a boy on board of Caledonia's ship. It happens because one of her close friends and second-in-command, Patience, gets saved by this boy, by this bullet, and she wants to return the favor and begs Caledonia to spare his life. But obviously having a boy on the ship full of girls, uh, while everyone knows that Caledonia ha hates bullets and that um, basically they never take prisoners, like, boys, etc, etc. There's obviously more to it and there is a reason why Caledonia herself wants to do everything in her power to dismantle Eric's ship fleet. I enjoyed reading Seafire, however I had a lot of problems with this book and I ended up giving it only three stars. One of the reasons being because it opens with a prologue that takes us uh, several years before the actual events of the book and whatever happens in that prologue was both very annoying and very redundant from the standpoint of writing. As a reader, I did not need to know whatever was happening in that prologue because it was being referenced all the freaking time in the book. Um, that is one thing. Second thing, it just showed how like, that was just a weird reason, because in a prologue, Caledonia makes a mistake of trusting a bullet um, that basically causes a lot of grief to her and Patience. And the fact that throughout the book, you're repeatedly being told that Caledonia was uh, brought up by a family of pirates and that everyone knew that bullets were not trustworthy. She still trusts one in that first, in that uh, prologue basically, and that annoyed the hell out of me. I don't think it was realistic enough and by, like I said before, basically the author could have cut that prologue and just got rid of it completely and it would not have changed anything in terms of the plot progression. However, it would have made the impression of the book so much better. That was number one. And number two, I felt that because the world and the rules of the world were not fully explained. For example, we know that there is some technology on board of Caledonia's ship. They can have hot showers and they have the kitchen, etc, etc. But there are also some elements which are not explained and we basically do not know how this world 
works and this is one of the things that I do not like even though I did enjoy the world building itself there were things that were not just not explained and left me really confused but once I got a hand of it somewhere like mid book I started enjoying it way more the third reason why I was not so in love with this book is because of the romance in it. Um, it is quite obvious that the author was trying to put two people together, uh, Caledonia and um, another character in this book, and that was being done so obviously and so almost unrealistically that it really annoyed me. More so, we are consistently being told that um, she kind of loves another person and feels very closely to them, but nothing is really explained. We do not know whether they're lovers or just close friends and what the heck is happening. And that was just, I don't know, but I... There were a lot of mixed singles in that book, and it is being marked as LGBT uh, and diverse read, etc., etc., but there were just some things that were not clearly stated that would have made this book so much better. Um, so yeah, I had some reservations about it, but nevertheless, super grateful to Penguin Random House for providing me with an arc. I have my review on my blog, feel free to read it, and let me know down below what you thought about this book if you read it as well. But I do want to continue with the series, I just don't think I will purchase the finished copy of this first book until I read the sequel, and if I love the sequel, I might get all of the copies, like finished copies, but for now, I'm just keeping this arc. So yeah, three stars. It was okay. Next, I read an arc of Hey Kiddo by Jared J. Krasochka, and this is an uncorrected proof of a graphic novel. This book is coming out on October 9th this year, and I got it also from BookCon. It was in Scholastic booth, I believe. Yes, it is Scholastic, and I really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed it way more than I expected to. So this book is basically an autobiography of the author, we have a main protagonist who is being brought up by a mother who suffers from addiction, so he eventually is being taken away by his grandparents, but they're also very difficult people to, you know, to grow up with. He does not really understand why his mother is always away and why he writes him letters and why he has to go and visit her, but she never visits him on his birthdays. There are some other things that happen in this book. There is like bullying, and references to mental health and also references to different types of addictions. I just realized I have a bookmark there, but no, I finished this book. So I really enjoyed this book. I highly recommend if you enjoy graphic novels and the stories um, of, you know, mental illness and addiction and all of that. It is a wonderful, wonderful book. At the cover it says, How I Lost My Mother, Found My Father, and dealt with family addiction, which is the best tagline to describe this book because it's basically all about it. I'm so happy that I read this book and I don't have my review up yet, but I'll do it very soon because I definitely want more people to read it. The art is both kind of realistic, but also a bit grotesque. I like the parts in which, um, like, um, chapter um, pages uh, because they look like wallpaper and yeah this book is really autobiographical and just I just love the fact that there is a mental illness in here and just it's so realistic and so good this is also a story about this boy who kind of grows up to be an artist I really enjoyed this book I highly recommend it I gave it four stars it was a very enjoyable read and I read it really fast next I read the book that was one of my most anticipated books of this year Year and I could not believe and I still cannot believe that I have an ARC copy of this book and this was The City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Victoria Schwab. I met her at BookCon again while she was signing over 700 copies of this book. I mean the ARC and I also got this book signed. It's not personalized but I will forever cherish it because she signed it and I'm like, I love this book so much. I obviously have a finished copy of this book. I pre-ordered it even though I had an ARC, so 
I could not wait to start reading it and I read it and I really really enjoyed it and I love everything that Victoria said about this book and how she was writing it and yeah I enjoyed everything about it however I still had some problems with the plot and it hurts me because this is the only book by Victoria Schwab which I gave less than four stars. I gave this book 3.5 stars and it's really paining me <laughs> to say this, but there were a lot of elements in this book that were just very much a cliche. We have a girl who has um, a sort of near death experience. She almost drowns and she starts seeing ghosts and she develops a friendship with one of the ghosts, but her parents cannot see him and they do not really believe her even though they are so to say ghost hunters so they have their own book and then they start their own tv show about haunted haunted places uh, all over the world so it is a very cute book it's written impeccably i could not believe that i was reading an uncorrected proof because i couldn't even see any typos like i saw one typo or maybe two for sure but it was a very clean text there were some elements that i'm sure were dealt with in the finished copy and i actually would like to reread a finished copy at some point maybe later in this year maybe next year but i really enjoyed this book and i enjoyed victoria's writing i think it was very well written a book for a middle grade and this is a middle grade supernatural story if you have not gathered yet so I think for a middle grade it was a very well written book, however I felt that it was a bit slightly more simplified than I would have preferred it to. And this is actually one of the things that Victoria addressed in her Insta stories on Instagram. She said that a lot of early reviewers were saying how this book is just so simple and the plot is so simple and obvious and she was saying like no but you have to make like have to be mindful of the fact that you're writing for a middle grade level which is I absolutely absolutely agree with but I also think that I expected slightly different from Victoria because she's a very experienced author however she said that she wanted to write the story for her 12 year old self and I think she succeeded and this is definitely one of the books that I would have loved as a 12 year old or some in some that age and I really enjoyed everything about it but just because I read Vicious and I read these Savage Son which were absolutely phenomenal I felt that this book was just not on par with them however I still gave it I would say it's still closer to four stars than three stars that's why I gave it four stars on Goodreads and four stars on Amazon however I always put in my reviews that it's actually 3.5 I'm really looking forward to the sequel I think the sequel might be better because it will be in a less familiar environment so this book is set in Edinburgh and the new book I think will be in Paris I might be mistaken but I'm really looking forward to reading the sequel like I said it's a very cute book I read it really fast but I just wanted more complexity and we did not have it however it is creepy it is creepy for a middle grade. I can give you that. Victoria is amazing when it comes to creepiness. And God bless her soul because I want her to write more books. Yes. My babies. And I just want to say that in the final, on the final copy, there is this cat. And it's super adorable. Oh, I just love this. It's so cute. Now I feel like reading this book again. The last but definitely not least was this manga and this is Fence Volume Number 1 by C.S. Paquette and Joanna the Mad. So I really, 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 really enjoyed it and I'm so happy that I bought it as a volume instead of um, going issue by issue because I think it was even cheaper to get like a physical copy is just like buying issues on Kindle. And this is set in a, like an imaginary all boys school which is, uh, which has a very strong on fencing team and we have a boy who transfers that there in that school and kind of joins their club and also competes to participate to be actually on the team and to participate in competitions so it all has to do about fencing uh, obviously since it's by CS Paquette we have LGBT representation um, and other diverse characters it's just lovely I there's a lot of humor in it and it's very much 
like uh, shonen or shoujo uh, manga and just look at this gorgeous art. I think it is gorgeous. I absolutely loved it. It's just everything about it was so freaking cute. I read it in one sitting and I was like, I need a sequel right now, please. I give it 4.5 stars. I think it is, the art is great, the storyline is great, and I don't care about anything else. 4.5 stars, 5 stars in good rates. Here we go. Okay, that's it. These are all the books that I read in August. Finally, I'm done with this wrap-up. I could not believe it took me so long. Jesus. Okay, that's it, guys. I'm done with my wrap-up. I'm sorry if I was rushing through some of the books, but I read a lot of books in August, as you can tell, even though I traveled to New York for the first five days of August, and I was really, really busy at the end of August. But here we go. I read a lot of books. I'm very proud of myself. And now we have to do September TBR, which will be in another video. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please let me know down in the comments below if you read any of the books that I mentioned and or if you plan to read any of the books that I mentioned. Yeah, I welcome all of the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you very soon. Bye! is, um, of course, ambulances. Okay, my back is already hurting. Oh, Ooh, wow, 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 wow. Where's my coffee? And that was the, no uh, <clears throat> you buy Penguin Random Press? Nope, I got it wrong. It is a very difficult John owes people. What is wrong with me? I don't know how, like, I, I don't know. Oh my god, I'm speaking so fast because I had so much coffee.